Fleetwood Town, after 10 years in League One, have been relegated to League Two. In this video, we are going to discuss why, who, and what happens next for the football club. We're going to have a look back at some of the club's best moments in the division, but also what went wrong. Why are Fleetwood suddenly in a position where next season, they're starting a whole new season in a whole new different league in the fourth tier of English football after a decade in the third tier and two attempts of nearly being in the championship, which is the second division in English football. If you're new to the channel, please like, please subscribe. This is your home of League One and now League Two content. So subscription will be appreciated. And if you could like the video as well, that'd be greatly appreciated. So Fleetwood Town won promotion on the 26th of May 2014. Yes, a memorable day. Antony Sarsovic's second half free kick was enough for the Cod Army to win promotion. Yes, Burton Albion came close a couple of times, but Fleetwood overall on the day probably deserved victory. And that squad, the likes of John Parkin, you know, Cresswell, Sarsovic, um, you know, Charlie Taylor, Nathan Pong, Chris Maxwell, it was a really good team and had good players in it. And, you know, we won promotion at Wembley, the best way to win promotion. The next season did all right, finished mid-table, got 63 points. It was a great benchmark, really, for the football club. The second season didn't start off too great, brought a couple of plays that might have not been good enough for the, for the level. Uh, the likes of Lyle De La Verde came in um, to the football club and didn't really strengthen. We didn't really, you know sign experienced players that were, were good enough for that level at that moment in time and we lost you know first couple of games um however we did get a win away at Berry it was a 4-3 you know victory and um, that day a couple of draws in there and then on a Tuesday night I think it was September October time we lose 5-1 away at Gillingham and make a load of changes Graham Alexander was sat the next day Stephen Presley then comes in experience from from Coventry and you know, we signed a lot of, you know, experienced short short plays like so Stefan Skugel came into the football club. We we stay up, and I mean just stay up on the last day. You know, Bobby Grant scored, um, and Devante Cole scored against crew, already relegated crew, to keep the Cod Army up to um File Coast neighbours Blackpool's expense. Blackpool went down, they were struggling with their ownership back then. And you thought, right, first two years in League One, done, dusted. Stephen Presley then takes pre-season and gets sacked right at the end of it. In comes Uwe Rosler, a German coach that had been at Leeds and Wigan. And pedigree was my first thought. I remember being at a pre-season friendly. Um, I think we might have played Wigan um, in that pre-season friendly. And I remember Uwe Rosler... Um, Basically, what passed us and basically we said, well, that's our new manager, sorted. He was announced on the Saturday and what followed was the best 12 months I've ever had in football. The best 12 months I've ever had, you know, going to matches, feeling alive and feeling part of something after not doing so previously. Fleet would start the season up and down. We got a good couple of wins early on in that season. Um, I'll always remember that. And then we went away at Chesterfield away. We were 1-0 up. And our goalkeeper at the time, Chris Neal, um, who was signing the summer experience, got injured. At this time, we were probably mid-table. 1-0 um, away at Chesterfield. They were struggling. They, they went down that season, I, I think. Um, you know, Ian Everett, who's now at Bolton, went in as manager towards the end of, um, you know, uh, as a player, kind of was a player coach um, for, for, for a time there. Um, and it was a great season, that season. So yeah, Chris Neal obviously came in, um, you know, in the summer, got injured, up steps Alex Cairns, comes in, makes a, a good couple of saves, then keeps his place. You know, um, we had some good games, you know, just before the Christmas period, we played Southport, it was 1-1, we scored three in about 10 minutes next time in the FA Cup. And then we beat the likes of, you know, Walsall and Chillingham at home, you know, Ashland has scored a couple of important goals for us. And we go away at Swindon, we draw the game, it wasn't a great result, but we were in and around the playoffs. And I mention uh, a certain game, uh, the, the Southport game, because it was a start of something. 
It was an 18-game unbeaten run after Port Vale away on the Saturday where we lost 2-1. And it was a horrible game, that Port Vale game. And it just felt, right, it's not with us here. And that 18-game unbeaten run, wow. It gets after Christmas and you think, right, Shrewsbury away, you go and win. And then you kind of think, hang on a minute, something special is brewing. We go away at Coventry on a Saturday um, I think it was around about the 20th of January and we struggled to break them down. Kyle Dempsey whips a corner and Kean Bolger, as he did most times that season, scored a header. We went away at Sheffield United away, who got 100 points that year. We took four points off them that year. We drew at home and beat them away. We beat them and outplayed them. We were absolutely immense. And at that time, that was the biggest crowd football had ever played in front of. And we were absolutely brilliant. Conor McLaughlin and Devante Cole with goals. Outstanding to a man. We come home the Saturday after. We weren't great. We, were, we looked tired. We looked lethargic. But we get a last minute goal through David Ball. It was a, a goal edge of the box. Chipped into the top corner. Spirit. Endeavour. A week later we go away at Charlton. We're 1-0 down for large periods. Amari Bell scores in the 94th minute. In two minutes later, David Ball hits a crossbar. We get a point. We should have three. And then we, 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 we carry on this momentum. We go away at MK Dons. We win the game. And so many times that season, I said, we can go anywhere and win 1-0 away from home. We won 1-0. Kean Bolger scored a header. And it just felt like everything that season fell for us. We beat Northampton 3-0 at home. You know, Bobby Grant scored that day. I think David Ball scored that day. David Ball wasn't, an, you know, a one-in-two striker, but the playmaking and could drop into midfield and defending from a corner, he was immense at. And that season was unbelievable for, for Fleetwood. We get to March. We're, we're 17 unbeaten. We are third in the league. Sheffield United at the top. Scunthorpe a second. We are third at the time. Bolton were fourth. Um, you had the likes of Bradford and Millwall and Barnsley all creeping up at this period in time as well. And it just made for a great League One season. It really did. And we were we were unbelievable, um, you know, in parts. And I, I still can't get my head round it. We went away to Scunthorpe, 17 unbeaten. They were second. We won 2-0. They had two goals disallowed, you know, with the Cairns Meeks, a number of great saves. And it was, you felt, here we go. The week later, we played Bolton, we get we beat, we get beat 4-2. And then we come back home, we draw a couple, we lose to Swindon at home 1-0. And um, we go away at Oldham, we were struggling. Um, I think Sheridan went in there. Um, again, and kept them up at the Shez Erection. We draw against Berry away from home, drew a blank. Then we go away at Oxford, win 3-1. We beat Millwall where Cairns again was, was terrific that game, kept us in it. Ben Davis scored a header. Ben Davis that season was unbelievable. Um, what, a, what a season, what a football club. We get to the, we get to the, you know, the last day with a, with a chance. Kyle Dempsey scored a goal away at Gillingham to make it 3-2, and that took promotion to the last day. We were third. If we won against Port Vale and Bolton dropped points against Peter at home, we were up. They won 3-0, we drew 0-0. The playoffs it was. We finished fourth, 80-odd points. Unbelievable season. Um, Ros had a shoestring budget, which we'll come back to soon. The greatest manager Fleetwood has had, you know, uh, in my eyes anyway. You know, Alexander won promotions. Later managers have got into the playoffs. But this manager did it on a shoestring and did it sustainably. And did it within reason. And did it playing good football. And did it with a good discipline. And I like that. You had players that wanted to fight. And that's what you want in a football club when you're Fleetwood Town. We didn't turn up in the playoffs. We looked tired. I worked out, I think we played 58 games that season. We played 46 league games. We played six in the FA Cup. Um, that makes it 52. I think we played four... Four or five in the Papa John's and one in the Carabao. And that went to extra time. So 57, 58 games. Takes your toll. They scored. Headed from a corner. Rory McCargo. Blocks off Pondy. There you go. Away you go. And that was a difference. So you think, right. Great season. Rebuild. Fleetwood Town then go and lose David Ball. Who goes to Rotherham. Lose Conor McLaughlin. Who leaves the football club. Um, you lose um, Ben Davis. Who was on loan. You're losing a good core of players, you don't replace them. Jordi Hawula came in, Aidan O'Neill came in. 
it wasn't good enough. The recruitment was poor. We started off with three wins. You think, and you know, we beat we beat Rotherham. We took Leeds to extra time. They beat us on penalties. Um, you know, we started off really well. To be fair, uh, beat Northampton, Cairns, Triple C. What I want to say that was um, this is the Alex Cairns show, isn't it? At the moment, um, but you think, and then reality hits. You, you know, you get towards Christmas. And that is where we started to suffer. We played Gillingham at home. Last game before Christmas, we lose 2-0. And we were poor. I think we were 7-8 seven, seven or 8 without a win at that point. We lost on the, the Sunday before to Peterborough. They beat us 3-2. We were 2-0. and up. We got it back to 2-2. Two, two. They scored. Danny Lloyd scored. And they won the game 3-2. And then things changed. The goalkeeper changed. He made a couple of changes. Chris Neal came in. Experienced players came in. We go away at Berry and Oldham and win both games. You think, right, great. Um, then we play Leicester in the FA Cup. Should have won that. Took them to a replay. They beat us in the replay where VAR was used for the first time. And you think, right, okay, something to build on. Uh, we go away at South End. We win. New signings, Paddy Madden and Tumani Di Guerrara come in and both score for the football club on debuts. You think, great. What followed? was an unravelling of results. Um, and maybe the start of a small decline. Um, fourth season in League One. Bear in mind, we've had ten. Um, we've, we lost six in a row. However, I, I put a stamper on that. Those six games we lost in a row. Um, I think Doncaster away were in there. Scunthorpe at home who were... Who were flying, you know. We played Blackburn at home, who, who again, you know, ended up, you know, getting promoted automatically. I think we played Shrewsbury, who were unbelievable that season, got I think 88, 89 points. So we we had tough fixtures. There's no doubt about that in my mind. We had, you know, tough fixtures, and we weren't great. Don't get me wrong. Doncaster away, lose three 0 and Rosler comes over. Bear in mind, he's won 42, 43 percent. Bear in mind the recruitment let him down the, in the summer. Um, he'd lost key players at this point as well. Um, Devante Cole also went in the, the January to this as well. Um, and we just looked a little bit jaded and on our feet. And it, I don't think it was Rosler's fault. I think Rosler was tired of working with limited resources because Rosler was a good pedigree manager. And the season before he'd shown what he'd, he'd done with no disrespect limited resources. The midfield, you know, your Bobby Grant, your George Glenders, your Marcus Wobbles were fighters and warriors, but they weren't <clears throat> to the degree of the other teams around there. And Fleetwood at the time dropped into the bottom four. Um Rosler got sacked. I was devastated and I, I still to this day wish we gave him more time. After that, 13 games to go, John Sheridan comes in. He draws his first three. I think it was MK Dons and Plymouth at home. We go away at Charlton. So you get three points from your first three. We go away at Rochelle. We win. That builds momentum. We stay in the division quite comfortably in the end. I think Sheridan wins six out of 13. We stay up. Sheridan goes. Barton comes in. Season five. Wow. Um, just stayed up. Gone from a pedigree manager. Experienced manager in Sheridan. Sheridan, nice payoff. Thank you very much. You've kept us in the division. Um, Joey Barton comes in. Right. Okay. First thought was, what are we doing? Um, then you listen to him speak and you think, right, okay. He had to do his interview prior. He couldn't start the job, I think it was till June or July the 3rd, because he had a ban from football due to betting. Um, so he, he started his job slightly late, um, but planning was already in place. First season under Barton, we signed a lot of experienced player, I think Steve Taylor came in, um, you know, oldish players that he knew and could trust. And he, you know, it didn't quite work out. We finished mid-table, looked comfortable. The budget had massively increased at this point. So we'd probably gone from a bottom six budget to a top 10 budget here. And sitting in the division quite comfortably, no problems. Wasn't great to watch, uh, but we did it. I did every single game that year and didn't really see us as a special team. We had good moments, but nothing too dramatic. But in second season, the lockdown season, 2019-2020, wow, didn't we sign some good players? We really did. We were mid-table <clears throat> all season, got to January, 
Then the big boys came in. Lewis Gibson came in. Um, Barry Mackay came into the building. At this point, Fleetwood had the likes of Chad Evans, Paddy Madden, Barry Mackay, Lewis Gibson, Ash Easton, Alex Cairns was still at the football club. Louis Coyle was still at the football club as well. Signed permanently. Two and a half years on loan, six months a permanent player. Must be a world record. Um, you know, Danny Andrew, left wing back at the time, was one of the best left wing backs in, in the division, in my eyes. Paul Coote's experienced player. Um, Glenn Whelan came in in January. It was a week because Glenn Whelan had a dream to try and get to 100 appearances for Ireland. I had a dream that I wanted to play for Fleetwood one day as well. You know, it can happen. Um, and what followed was 12 games of blissness. Um, it was a great 12 games. It's nothing on the 18-game unbeaten run under Rosler because at that point we felt underdogs, underbar, and it felt like we belong there because we've been here before and it felt like these players are better than what we had previously. Uh, went away at Wickham, one on a Tuesday night. We had 10 men for, for a bit of the game as well. Um, they had only lost once at home all season before that. Um, to Coventry, who won, who won the league. We only lost once at home that season. That was to Ipswich. Um, they scored a free, I think, Nesta Guinness War. Um, Kane Vincent Young scored um, a free kick. Um, and that was it. That was the end of that. Um, but we, we played some good stuff. We, we drew away at Sunderland. We should have won. They scored in the last minute. Uh, beat Portsmouth at home, drew away at Fratton Park in that 12-game unbeaten run, the quick turnaround because of a rearranged game. <coughs> beat Doncaster. It was a great 12-game unbeaten run. It really was. And we got ourselves in a position where we were in the playoffs. The next game was Rotherham at home after, Sun after Portsmouth. And on the Friday, football stops. And what does stop is money coming into the football club from BES Utilities, which is Andy Pilly's core company. <coughs> And Andy Pilly will get a mention later on in this video. It's a long video. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Keep liking, keep subscribing. Um, we'll come to Andy Pilly very shortly. And this was the, th the first thought I thought, ooh, can Fleetwood Town still be run sustainably? Can Fleetwood Town still be, you know, running, you know, reliably on Andy Pilly? Because the, his core business had been... Altered by a pandemic, like everyone else. The season gets altered and gets told playoffs. Now, as a professional outfit, my first thought was, we should have carried on that season. If that season carried on, we'd have gone up. I'm 100% sure on that, because the momentum we were on, the games we had left, it's Fleetwood, we probably would have messed it up. But I believed in that point, we'd have stayed up. We'd have, we'd have stayed up, stick, kept with the teams, and gone up. That I honestly believe that. And... We had the quality in the dressing room to do so. Lockdown comes, three months, no football. We get told you're playing a game in three weeks against Wickham. Same for both teams. Barton comes out, we've never been as prepared for a game of football in our lives. Okay? Gary Vainsworth, settled, knew his role, spoke well. Job done. 1-0 to Wickham. Warm-ups, theirs was better than ours. 2-0. Our players look confused coming out the, 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 the tunnels. You know, they look riled on. Their, 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 their players were clapping every throw and were like a crowd for them. They had, they had that togetherness. We didn't. Look, Cairns makes a couple of mistakes. Paddy Madden gets sent off. Louis Coyle gets sent off. We're down to nine men. Um, Louis Coyle is played out of position. Danny Andrew is dropped. Tactics were not spot on. There was a number of things. You know, Joey Barton, tactically, not great. A couple of mistakes from Cairns, who in the next game got man of the match and saved a penalty. Bear in mind as well in the first leg as well. Got man of the match in the second leg. Um, and then we were without our star striker who was on the bench all season in Paddy Madden. I couldn't get my head around it. Um, next season, right, lockdown season, no fans. Fleetwood haven't got any fans. People will come at me. You think, right, okay, 2020, 2021. You think, right, this is it. We can push on here. Start well. <clears throat> We're not playing well. Barry Mackay joins um, on a, on a season-long loan. And we bring Mark Duffy in. Paul Coots is still at the building. We've got experienced players now to add to the Chen Evans, the Paddy Maddens. Um, you know, we were jaded a bit at the back. The, the, the Harrison Holgates and James Hill had to come in and Jamie Tetis had to come in and do a job for his young players from our academy. You could tell Barton didn't want to work with that. Barton wanted the budget. Barton, you know, relying on a big budget to make him look 
that look the results better than they maybe were. And I get that he wants plays it. I've played two, three hundred times. He knows he can do with that. I get that. But Fleetwood Town are a club that need to be able to provide pathways for young players to make money. To, if we're ever going to be able to be run sustainable, we can't keep relying on Andy Pilly putting in three, four, five, and sometimes even six, seven, eight million pounds into a football club just for a year's trade. Realistically, let's be honest about it. And it's not fair. Um, start off mid table matchy, really. Always in about the top eight, the top ten picture. The football wasn't great. The football, you could see the players looked a little bit, not despondent, but a few of them didn't really want to be there, really. Um, what comes now is a four-game unbeaten run. We play Wigan at home, Ollie Crankshaw scored. I said they would. And then we play Crew away, draw one all. We're poor. Crew's first season in League One, had a great season. We're, we're, we're flying with the playoffs. Um, did really well. Um... And then Barton gets sacked after four games. We win away at Swindon in there. I think we draw the other three. And this was key players falling out with him. Chad Evans, Alex Cairns. You know, the list goes on. You know, there's other players in there as well. He said Chad Evans will never play for the football club again. He was so right. Chad Evans left anyway. Um, Alex Cairns will never play for the football club again. Dropped him for Jason Lutweiler. Um, on the 4th of January, <clears throat> got sacked. And then for a month, Simon Wiles comes in, takes over. We look disastrous. We look poor. Um, Simon Grayson comes in and brings a steady shape, keeps us up. You think, right, okay. Season 8, Simon Grayson gets the job permanently. After keeping us up, did well. Um, in an embargo now, fans are back. In an embargo, um, Fleetwood took out a loan, basically, to help the club run through through COVID. I think it was a £600,000 loan we took out. That could be wrong. It's estimated to be around that figure. Um, and the pillie came out openly and said that. What that meant is, I think it was a squad of 22 players, plus you can have your young players. They don't count in that figure. We had a small squad. We started the season all right. We, although we lost the first three, beat Cheltenham at home 3 2 in the last minute. Um, Darnell Johnson scored. We go away at Rotherham, win 4 2, we're excellent. Darnell Johnson gets injured. That was the story of the season. We had key players out Joe Garner, Anthony Pilkington, uh, Darnell Johnson out all long periods of time. We were relying on your James Hills, your Jay Matetes, your Shaden Morrises, your young players to get you through moments. Kean Hayes. I think we used probably about 35 different players that year. And most were under the age of 23, 24. And it just wasn't right. Simon Grayson gets sacked after a defeat away at Oxford. Which was funny because the day after Oxford away, he came in the season before. Um, I think Pilly might have been a bit nervous and thought... We are, we're going to go down here and brought a steady pair of hands in quicker than you might have imagined. Um, and that was the end of Grayson. Stephen Craney comes in and gets a bit of an impact. I think he wins four of his first eight, draws two, loses two. Um, you know, you beat your Gillinghams, um, you know, you know at home. Uh, you beat Rotherham last minute. Anthony Pilkington scores the last minute. How important that was, by the way. We, we did the double over Rotherham, who, what, who finished second. Beat Gillingham on the last day where Fleetwood stayed up. Fleetwood Town won one in 21 matches. That was a way at crew finished bottom of the league. How we stayed up that year was absolutely beyond me and I still do not know. For example, this time, this season, at current time of recording, Fleetwood have got 40 points from 45 games. Two seasons ago, Fleetwood got 40 points from 46 and went down and, and, and stayed up. 40 points this year has sent them down. You know, with this this time with six points adrift. That shows you how lucky we were to stay in the division. And you cannot be reliant on young players to get you through. And financial costs meant that we had to do it. And that was the start of the downfall. It's as simple as that. We stay up. Craney miraculously keeps us up with about a 16 or a 17% win record. Wasn't on him. Young players, too many injuries, poor pitch. Um, poor run of results, we, we stay up because there's four worst teams. You know, your Gillinghams, your Crews go down instead of us. Your Wimbledons, you know, went down. Joe Garner scored a last-minute goal against Wimbledon. Two games from the final day. In the last minute, keeps us up, basically. That point. 
Season 9, Scott Brown. Wow. Um, a lot of things change. Experienced bodies come in. And this was only about 18 months ago to, to 21 months ago now. And he comes in May time. And you think, right, refresh. Experienced bodies come in. And, you know, a couple of young players come in as well. And we look fitter. We look stronger. We competed. We were better against the better sides. Weren't great against the sides at the bottom, really, at time. Weren't great to watch. But who cares? We got results. Went away at Ipswich. We got two points off Ipswich. Took four points off, off Plymouth Argyle last year. Um, and managed, realistically, we went on a great run around February, March time, where we won kind of four or five in a row. Uh, we beat Peterborough at home. Um, you know, you, you get to the fifth round of the FA Cup as well. You're losing the last minute there. And um, we got some good results. Charlton away 2-1 as well. Rooney scored um, a great goal as well. And we stay up comfortably. Finish 13th in the league, right there or thereabouts. And then you think, right, season 10. I asked Scott Brown in the summer just gone in Waterford, what's the aim for the season? My honest expectation was to get back from that conversation. 12th. Top 12. Better it. Bear in mind the season before, the aim for the football club, in his first full season, when I asked that question, was 12th and try and get to 60 points. I think we got something like 58, 59 points, finished 13. It's not bad. And a fifth round of the FA Cup makes up for that. It's a really good season. It really is. It doesn't matter about that one extra place. That's what I was expecting. We'd be lucky to stay up. At that point, I was slightly nervous about the outcomes going to happen. Two days later, Andy Pilly, who has funded over £30 million into this football club. Without Andy Pilly, Fleetwood Town will be playing North West Counties pub football. It is as simple as that. We'd be nowhere. He's pumped £30 million into the football club. Maybe £12 million of that are assets in Poolfoot Farm, Highbury Stadium, new stands. Probably £15 million, if we're being honest with you. And then you're looking at your players and your, your losses, your day-to-day -day staff as well. Um, as well. But £15 million of that is there to be shown with with the with Poolfoot, improvements in Poolfoot, a new dome in there as well. There's a lot of good money in there as well that's gone. It's not just, you know, £15 million. And look, gets charged guilty. At that moment in time, it wasn't just for the funding of the football club. It was the fact that Pilly was a father figure. He looked after that football club day to day. If anyone was making a bit of a distraction for anyone, he'd sort it out. He'd cut out any crap. And that's what I liked about him. And we lost that. And everyone at the football club were good people. There are good people at Fleetwood Town Football Club. And they want the best interest for the football club. The, the people high up at Fleetwood Town right now have been there for years and years and they want the best things for the football club. But they were left a bit starstruck thinking, wow, what do we do now? Where do we go? How do we move the football club on a little bit? And it was a bit of a shock. It was a bit of a sickness. We all knew he'd probably go down for the length of time that he was and what was going to be penalised on the football club. Nobody could anticipate a 13-year sentence. No one could anticipate what was going to happen next. And it took the football club maybe three or four months to kind of get used to that. Well, when you're six games into the season and you're sacking Scott Brown and you're on your second manager in November and you're in the bottom four and you'd only won, what, three games all season, it's very hard then to play catch for three or four games. Going back, the players that were signed were good players. Ryan Broom comes in, you keep Jack Marriott and Jane Stockley, who you signed in the January. Uh, you signed Boston Lowell, who, who was a big key player for us. Ben Hennigan came in. The funding was never the issue. The squad was never the issue on paper. Fleetwood Town, on paper, at the start of the season, had a good squad. Had experience in there that should have done better than it did. And I look at it and I think, why? We were imbalanced. We didn't have a proper left wing back who was fit enough. Adam Montgomery was, you know, injured most of the time. You know, we had Rooney who had played 40, 45 games a season before. Ben Hennigan has played a good level for Sheffield Wednesday. And if it wasn't for an injury, he wouldn't be at Fleetwood. You know, Josh Vella, experienced player, played over two, three hundred times. Jack Murray, James Socket, know where the goal is. That was never the problem. Scott Brown gets sacked after six games. Those six games, he loses. You look at it, he lost by the odd goal in every single one. You know, bar Bolton, where we lose 3-1. Bolton, who are third in, the, who are third in the league. We lose away at Derby. We lose away at Charlton. Charlton were one of the favourites to get promoted this year, at least getting the playoffs. Good side, good team. Alfie May scores a brace. Played well that day, deserved a point. 
the two six, the three sickness was a point away at Carlisle, opening day of the season. Probably the toughest game, bar your top side, you could get. Bar your Portsmouth, your Derbys, your Boltons, your Charlton. Bar those, Carlisle away on the opening day of the season. Although they've had a disastrous season, was the toughest game you could get. They've just won promotion. There's 10,000 in it. It's going to be rocking. First game in League One for 10 or 11 years. It's going to be absolutely bouncing. And it was. We got a point. Good point overall. We were behind the match. Brendan Wiradu comes in and scores. Uh, and then we lose at home to Cambridge. 2 0 were awful. Shrewsbury at home. You know, Robertson slips. Jay Lynch gets sent off. Um, there's another sending off. I think Josh Hill gets sent off in the game. We lose the game 1 0 and it was awful. Scott Brown then gets sacked after six games um, away at Charlton. And then a two week period. Lee Johnson comes in. And he got me on side quite quickly. I bought into him, car salesman like, you know, he, he's one of those he you could go in with, you know, five grand for a house and somehow come out wanting, you know, somehow getting a mortgage for a five hundred thousand pound house with a swimming pool, a sauna and a steam room. That's how much he gets you on side and he gets you in, he gets you hooked. He's like a dice and he sucks you in. He really is. And I like that. We started off well, to be fair. Um, I think we got four or five games unbeaten. Um, we beat Exeter at home 3-0. And you think, right, OK, the group doesn't look great. Like, it looks divided. It really does. You've got your experienced players that were Brown's men, you know, Mr. Brown's men or Mr. Brown's boys. Should be a TV show, that. Um, and then you've got your young players as well who don't know how to feel about it. You had a divide of about two or three. And realistically, your Fleetwood... We're mid-table side. You can't afford to be like that. You've got to be as one. You've got to fight. Fight for the badge. Mean that badge to you. Um, that's what I believe anyway. And then the 25th of November, we lost 3-0 against Stevenage. 28th of November, lost 3-0 away at Wigan. Early goals in every single one. We conceded in the first five minutes in both games. Then we play Cambridge. I think it's the 2nd of December. We're 3-0 down after 13 minutes. They miss a penalty and beat us 4-0. The worst I've ever watched Fleetwood. That was the worst game. Until we played Derby and we lose 3-0. And the players walked in, looked despondent, looked sad, looked depressed. Didn't look like they wanted to be there. Um, and that was a worry, a worry of concern. The next day... We play Northampton. We lose 3-0. And they got off the bus. I made sure I watched them. And they walked off the bus. Right? Like this. They'd already been beat. They'd already been beat. We lose 3-0. We play next week against Peterborough. They have about eight, nine shots on goal. Jay Lynch has a really good game. Um, you know, one of... You know, two or three that, you know, he's had this season where he's kept us in the game. There's been some poor performances, but he played really well that day. Lose the game 1 0, could easily be 5 or 6, could be a cricket score, could have got hit for 6. Played Portsmouth at home, Portsmouth away at Fratton Park, we draw 1 1 at top of the league. After 6 games not scoring, it's a great point. Play Carlisle, should get battered, we draw 1 1. Play Bolton, lose 2 0. Lee Johnson sacked after 17 games at 17 points. And at that point, everything needed changing. The captaincy in Josh Vellett was an absolute joke. He did. He was not a captain at all. Um, player at Bolton, you know, there was a player in there at Shrewsbury, I believe that, but the attitude from what I saw in the pitch, I'm not going to say he didn't give everything because I'd never ever question a professional athlete giving everything, but it just looked to me that he wasn't there to motivate players. He didn't stand up and be counted like our captain does now in Brendan Wiradu. Brendan Wiradu, since being into captain, is the best thing that's happened to this football club this season. Brendan Wiradu, since being made captain, has gone from a, a steady 6 out of 10 every week to an 8 out of 10 every week. That is the best thing that's ever happened to Brendan Wiradu. He gets the fans and connects with the fans. Josh Feller didn't ever have that at Fleetwood, ever. And that's a fact. And then we had Jack Marriott, who pushed for a move. We kept him. Scott Brown kept him. I'm a big believer if a player wants to leave a football club, you let him go. I don't care if you don't think anyone is as good. I want players at our football club who fight, 
who give everything that want to be there. I don't want players. I don't care if you've gone and scored 20 goals a season or 28 goals in a season for Peterborough. I'd rather have a striker that scored 12 goals for Kingsling Town that will give me 100% than a player that will give me 40%. I want 100% in, in the, the teams I watch. That's a fact. That's all I want. Um, and then Jack Marriott leaves. Josh Vela leaves. Josh Earl leaves. I respected Josh Hill because he gave everything till the very end. And he played and he was a Rolls Royce. He won play of the season, you know, last year, and deservedly so. Um at this point, Charlie Adam got the job. Um I wasn't happy about it at the start. I thought inexperienced, we're what, ten points adrift. We lose our first four under Charlie Adam, and it takes some time to get rid of the players that don't want to be there. And he nearly did that. There was two or three players still at the football club that I felt that were still in that bit of a cult um, of, you know, Scott Brown's boys. The likes of Jay Lynch, Sean Rooney, um, that felt like they were, weren't were happy over the Scott Brown sack. And, that the, you know, they were brought in by him. They played pretty much every game under him. And that's fine. That happens in football. It really does. Um, and the dressing room was divided. We bring... Some you know young lads in that want to be at the football club um, to alongside the players. Gavin Kilkenny, Elijah Campbell um, came in and he felt, right, OK, now we've got a team that are going to fight for us. And they suddenly stepped up. Wickham away. We're 2-0 up, promise get sent off. We draw the game 2-2. That was the moment we dropped two points. And I think, right, OK. We then go and win two on the spin. And we think, we, we cut the gap from 12 to 6, you think. Then we had some draws in there to Exeter, Port Vale, where you're giving head starts. There's been so many occasions this season, Charlton as well, where we go down. And unfortunately now we're in a situation where we lose 4-0 four, four away at Oxford, lose away at Blackpool. We're just not good enough. The team isn't good enough. Um, that's down to having no owner, an inexperienced manager. I think Charlie Adam, although he's got the same points per game under as Lee Johnson, has done a relatively good job. In the nicest way possible, you can't polish a turd. You really can't. And this football club has had three managers, no owner, no budget as well. The lowest budget we've probably ever had. We've probably got rid of twenty, maybe a sixteen to twenty thousand pounds in wages and replaced them with about six thousand pounds in wages. It cut in cut by fifty, sixty percent, I'd say, from the outside. And Charlie Adams deserves a lot of credit for getting the tune he did out of those players because they gave everything. And in, in every game, I felt like we were in, bar the Oxford game, the Cheltenham game, we were poor. Those poor performances, those poor first halves that weren't acceptable. But I don't think you can blame a manager for that at times. He's very divided with the fan base. Personally, I think we should stick with because I think that why change again? I think he deserves an opportunity. I think we all knew we were going down. I think that he came to keep us up, but he was 10 points adrift. If you ask the most athletic fans, do you think you'll stay up when Cheyenne was appointed? Maybe one in a hundred would uh, would have said, yes, I think we'll stay up. Um, people don't like him because of his Blackpool connections. And I get that. But Andy Pilly, he has Blackpool connections. You know, we love him. We cherish him. We, without him, we wouldn't have a football club. And I know what Pilly's done is wrong. And it's a sad day that when he went got sent down for the football club for himself. And it, it just feels very despondent because of the no ownership and, you know, what's going on. Because Fleetwood Town have a motto, onwards together. And that means staying, sticking together. And that's what Fleetwood need to do now going forward. We've been relegated. We've not been good enough. We've had an inexperienced manager now that we need to back. The budget next season will be the lowest budget Fleetwood have ever had because they'll be in a lower division. They will be not be earning as much money from funding. You lose six to eight hundred thousand pounds, I'd imagine, from obviously um, the deal uh, from all the deals. Sky is going to come in and take over, but everyone's going to get that, so it's not really a benefit. And to be fair, it'll probably make Fleet with less money because they're only going to show the better teams in League League Two. Let's be honest about it. Your Notts Counties, your Bradford, for example. Um, the first game next season should be staying in the division with 46, 47 points. I would say 50, but I think 46, 47 points might be enough next season. Um, and the, re the real reason we've been relegated, no owner, inexperienced manager, you swap three times. The people at the football club are good people, but 
they aren't proper leaders and they are there to seize the day at this moment in time. And I respect what they've done. They've guided this football club through difficult time because this football club might have, you know, potentially not have been here and might have potentially you know, have struggled to, to pay its bills or meet meet wages or, you know, or or even play matches or put a team out. But we've been able to do that. Fleetwood Town is still standing from 12 months ago. We've got through the most difficult 12 months. The thing is, we need to get the ownership sorted, get players through the building, run sustainably and try and cut that £6 million that we lost in the summer um, across the last year down dramatically because you cannot lose £6 million a year. I don't like that. I'd rather be 2 or £3 million quid because that, that's normal. Most football clubs, you, you lose money. This football club means everything to me and means everything to a lot of people of Fleetwood. It's one of the only things in the town. There's many good things in the town. The people are, are you know, are friendly, are great. You know, it's a nice, you know, homely town. There's not much going on in Fleetwood, but the things that do go on, you know, people are welcome. It's a family football club. We need to get back to the Uwe Rosler days where we're signing players, making them better and selling them on for big amounts. We need a captain that give everything. We've got that in Brendan Wiridu. That's the first step. He might go. If he goes, you give it to another young player. I think Cole Johnson would be the perfect fit. My, my message would be to try and stick with the fleet, with, with the team and stick with the football club. I'm going to be doing the exact same. It's hurt this season. We've not been good enough. But I've been on here 40 minutes. And most of what I've said is a positive one. A couple of years weren't great, but you go back and listen to the Rosler stories. It was a great season. We were unbelievable. And the motto of the football club is Onwards Together. But one of the songs we walk out to is Together in Electric Dreams. And one of the lines will always stick with me as this football club. We'll always be together no matter how far it seems. That line needs to be on the wall of Fleetwood. No matter how far it has seemed this season, you know, when we were losing games, when we lost six and a bounce and didn't score, you know, a relegation, you know, that's been on the cards all season, in the bottom four all season, the worst season this football club has ever had, a first ever relegation since the club reformed, that motto needs to be printed on. And that motto needs to be, we are Fleetwood, we are fighters, and we don't give up. That has got to be it. There's been many reasons Fleetwood Town got relegated, but there was many good reasons Fleetwood got there in the first place. Because it's commitment, a togetherness, a good owner who pumped money in. Yes, you can comment where the money came from, but most of his money was legitimate. Let's be honest about it. I won't get into that. Good, good management, good players, good staff, good pitches, good, good, you know, people around the football club. We had it good. And that's what we need to get back to. We need to be Fleetwood that... No one likes coming to Highbury. It's our pitch, it's our rules. And again, if we do that in League Two next season, we will stay up. I'm not bothered about going up. As long as I and we have a football club to support, I'm very, very happy with that. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please let me know what your thoughts on it and if you'd like to see more of these going on as well. It was going to be a shorter video, but I thought I'd just come on here and talk about our experience in League One. We've had some great moments. Sheffield United away was up you know, there winning there both times. We won away at Derby, beat Coventry, beat uh, Blackpool as well. You know, we finished fourth and finished in the playoffs. Played against Wickham in the playoffs as well. We're a couple of games away from Wembley. You know, and we've had it great. We've had a couple of near misses with relegation. We've now been relegated, but it's time to get being go, it's time to get back to the fleet where we know and we love in League 2 next season. Thank you for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Stick with us. Until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Up the cards. Up the League 2.